All right, guys, here we are back in North Carolina at CSM Production. And this time we're installing a combination uh, setup with a press brake and a shear. But before we talk about CSM production and show you these awesome machines that they bought, let's rewind a little bit back to May of 2020. And what you're looking at here is the very first press break that I ever bought. And so it was only a five foot 40 ton unit. And the very first job I needed it for back when I was still doing jobs um, was an eight foot long piece. And so I, I made it work. I did a segmented bend and it, it was fine. Um, but I thought, you know, I should probably just go ahead and get an eight footer. So I put this on the market for sale and I think I made like a, maybe a couple thousand, fifteen hundred dollars in profit off of it. And it sold super fast. And that is what got me into and led to me doing this on a full-time basis. And I sold it to Jimmy Woods of S and W, uh, fabrication over in, uh, North Carolina, just outside of Charlotte. And Jimmy told his high school best friend about the about the machine and his high school best friend is Brandon who who is uh, runs the metal fab shop at CSM production. So pretty cool. Um, and so Brandon ended up buying an eight foot break from me back in I think 2020 as well. Um, and then recently Brandon asked if I could take a trade in, get him to bigger newer machines and I helped him get his, eight foot brake sold and we got him these two cool uh 13 foot 220 ton press brake and 10 foot quarter inch rated shear which we will show you more detail about in a little bit no more you may be asking if they if they have a water jet why in the world would they need a shear well the work they do is very um intense they have very tight deadlines to meet these venue dates and the emphasis on um, flexibility in fabrication, being able to just knock out a quick job. And guess what? If they're trying to build a whole stage and they've, they've got, you know, 30 or 100 brackets to make that go into that stage and the water jet is tied up, running slow for two, three hours, cutting out a bunch of brackets. Well, they can be over here shearing up some parts to make some quick brackets and things to, um, you know, to keep their uh, fabrication work moving on. So as you can see, these guys are running a water jet and a water jet is perfect for what they do. And I'll show you a little bit about what they do in a second, but they, they're not high volume, but they cut a variety of materials. So steel, aluminum, a lot of uh, composite type materials for the kind of business they're in. And a water jet is absolutely perfect for that. Water jets are slow, they're high maintenance, but you can't beat them for their versatility. So you're looking at Lyle there. I've uh, been in contact with Lyle for, gosh, three years, I guess now, and um, mostly working over the phone and on text uh, on his other break, but it's good to get a chance to meet him in person. And he, uh, you know, is kind of the main uh, fabricator, machine operator, kind of like, you know, runs the show of the day-to-day -day stuff going on, making all the parts with the other guys they have working there as well. So CSM Production, located in Harrisburg, North Carolina, just outside of Charlotte, super cool company. The products and the, the business that they're into, what they do is everything related to sports and entertainment and corporate events. And it's specifically related to like the, the booths and the displays and the, you know, the concert stages and venues and um, even corporate America, like trade show booths and, you know, and all that kind of thing. And then they've got, you know, a digital services product that they offer to do, you know, help with streaming and, you know, things like that. You're seeing a look at it here. And of course, Las Vegas, I mean, what what other place in America is there for Trade Show Central and all the booths that get set up uh, for that, you know, type of business?
pretty close pretty, to an pretty there. Pretty dang close. Pretty much spot on. All right, you can see the machine is running a little bit slow there on the ram speed and that's because the machine did have some shipping damage and damaged some uh, wiring and, and a couple of valves uh, which i flew over there a couple days later and took parts off of another machine that were a little bit undersized but we were able to get them up and going until we can get the correct parts so that's why the ram's looking like it's a little bit slow but the main emphasis for these guys is to be able to have convenience be able to simply walk up to the machine knock a couple of quick 90s and some parts and move on down the line so we were bending almost all their parts with a two inch die opening which was leaving you know depending on the thickness of the material it was leaving a little bit wider than normal radius that you might want in some parts but again whether it's got a you know a 60 thou radius or you know a quarter inch radius they don't really care most of the time they just need a bracket with a 90 degree bend in it I was trying to get you in there tight where you could see a good look at the shear action, but the glare on that protective window was kind of messing with the camera, but you get the idea. We're just shearing some, uh, some quarter inch material here. Um, again, this is a 10 foot wide shear with a quarter inch thickness capacity. So here's a look at all the sample parts that we've been just kind of dialing in various angles, different material thicknesses, a lot of the common materials that they use. I think they use a lot of eighth inch aluminum and quarter inch aluminum, quarter inch steel is mostly what they use. They don't do a lot of very thick stuff there. So. CSM has gotten so busy. They've got the crew from S and W, Jimmy and a couple of his guys, uh, Garrett and uh, you know, his helper there building this uh, shipping container that they're fabricating from scratch for one of their trade show booths. And then here's a look at the machine. This, again, I think I mentioned it, but it's a 13-foot, 220-ton press brake. And there's a look at the uh, servo-driven main motor. And by having a servo-driven main motor, you don't have to listen to the hydraulics run all the time. It only engages when, you know, when the ram is actually bending. And uh, so very nice feature. Big thanks to Brandon and Lyle and uh, all the guys there at CSM Production and, of course, Jimmy and uh, and Garrett with S&W. Um, I consider these guys friends. I think we'll be over there again sometime in the future. You know, and the one thing about doing this kind of business that, you know, not to go on a rant here, but that you, you have to think about if you're somebody like me selling a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment to to a company – is are they going to be an asset or a liability, you know, and same thing for them. They're going to ask if, you know, if they're buying a machine for me, am I going to be an asset or a liability? And when you have a good partnership, you're both assets to each other. And, you know, and you might be thinking, well, how, how could a potential customer be a liability to me? But I'm offering, you know, service um, and, and warranty on these machines and they're very powerful and they can get damaged very easily if you're not careful with them. So that's, that's why it could be, you know, selling a hundred thousand dollar machine could be a blessing or a curse. I mean, it, it sell it to the wrong person and it will be a nightmare for you, uh, for years to come, sell it to the right person and they'll be your friend. They'll be your supporter. And of course you're going to be right there helping them with anything they need at any time. So, very thankful for these guys. Definitely a good partnership and look forward to supporting them with anything that, uh, that they need in the future.